Welcome back to uh, uh, Pokemon 2020 Malmo Regional Event um, uh, brought to you by Victory Road. We are here for the final round of the event. Um, we do actually have Niels Dunlop next uh, against uh, Alexandra Schwickel. And um, uh, really, really exciting match coming up. They're both at 5 and 2 at the current moment. We are potentially looking at a win and in, if you may, with regards to if uh, whoever wins this set will most likely go X and 2 and probably into top cut, whilst the uh, losing uh, player, unfortunately, will just miss from that opportunity. Yeah, so definitely, you know, a really important game here. Going, you know, X2, you really know, like, okay, I have to really win this to even have a chance yep. to top cut. But both these players are, like, quite familiar yes. with being in top cut. Definitely, definitely. We, d we do have um, quite esteemed players uh, coming up. They've got a lot of experience coming into this tournament and throughout this actual format as well. We have Alexandra coming up with her achievements. Um, we can see quite recently she's been able to get a lot of uh, s solid, consistent placings, to be honest, in the past uh, year or so. Um, uh, we have a top four at Frankfurt Regionals, a World's Day 1 of 2019 as well, and bottom regionals, which did um, actually happen earlier this year, she was able to get top 16. Yes, I've actually uh, casted uh, two of her uh, I think accomplishments yeah, of course here, did, and yeah. she did very, very well there. Here on Nils Dunlop's side, we also see quite a lot of accomplishments. He had a top eight in Worlds in 2017. He is the Momo Regional Champion of 2018. He also made it into the semi-finals of Worlds in 2018. And then in 19 again, he won the Richmond Regional Championship. Yeah, so we've got a proper, proper intense set right now, especially because of the fact that, that it is a win and in, if you may. Um, because, I mean, it's very solid. Uh, Niels, I believe, uh, he is also quite well known to be able to bring in very interesting teams, kind of niche teams, but they kind of make sense because he's able to like distinguish what's kind of working in the current uh, meta as well. And him being able to be a world's semi-finalist, reaching the top four um, of the most prestiged actual event of uh, VGC and TCG, of course, but of Pokemon is a huge accomplishment. Yeah, definitely also here kind of already looking, he introduced the Incineroar and the Venusaur onto his team, you know, both two Pokemon that yep. were lately now introduced with that uh, series tree. And very interesting to see what they're going to be doing here and seeing if they're going to be worthwhile here for Niels to bring. Yes, and um, I do have to make a special mention. <laughs> that very, very <laughs> special last Pokemon <laughs> slot, that bird, that bird of majestic <laughs> amazingness, Surfetched, <laughs> is actually making its first appearance on our stream for our last round. I am so hyped for this Pokemon. People have not been considering how strong it is actually in the current format. Yeah, here we're going into that team preview here. Alexandra is running that Dragapult, Whimsicott, Togekiss, Conkeldor, Incineroar, and that Lapras, which we've seen a lot of from. And also on Neil's side, we have that Incineroar and that Lapras as well as the Jellicent, that Sir Farfetch you just mentioned, that Togekiss and the Venusaur. Yeah, so I mean, we've uh, we already see and uh, notice a bit of a pattern there. We have that um, uh, mi double Pokemon mirror between the Incineroar and the uh, Lapras, most likely to be that uh, G Max Lapras being able to set up the Aurora Veil that we have seen multiple mm -hmm. times already throughout the entire day, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, Pokemon that now with that Aurora Veil ability has been doing incredibly well just because it makes team, you know, a little bit more bulky. You can yep. live a, li a little bit more attacks. Mm -hmm. It may be a little bit easier to cog against like this really strong Dynamax attack that, you know, now Pokemon have access to since this generation. Oh, exactly. And we do actually see the Venusaur as well. Um, we haven't seen Venusaur do as much um, during uh, the entire day, but it's still a solid, solid option. It does have sleep powders as well that it, is, it has a chance to miss of course but um, it's still a valid option especially if we've even seen a few Venusaurs um, uh, uh, Dy Dynamax as well and try to like self boost themselves by using Max Ooze so very very uh, interesting uh, thought process uh, behind Neil's team and Alexandra's as well and we're actually gonna get straight into the battle uh, as it may as well so um, what do you think about Leeds Romy? Um, and maybe we're going to see the Togekiss Dragapult yeah. lead, which we've seen many times. And 
We know that it works incredibly well. Here Very we're true. going to see the leads. Actually, we're going to see that Incineroar and Jellison come out from Nils. And actually, it is the Whimsical together with that Dragapult from Ale Alexandra that Incineroar will fire off and intimidate. And seeing that it actually doesn't proxy clear body, meaning that Dra Dragapult is most likely going to be Infiltrator. Yes, yes, that's definitely a very... Uh, that gives a lot of information just from the get-go. Because um, being able to opt most probably for, let's say, or most likely for uh, Infiltrator ability instead of the clear body would kind of suggest you don't mind uh, facing Intimidate, which would further suggest it might be maybe specially based attack as well. Um, but pairing it with Whimsicott can turn out to potentially have certain shenanigans, and we actually see a Dynamax come off straight off in turn one. Um, I'm not sure who this is from, actually. I haven't actually seen the We avatars. are going to see that Dragapult go from the Dynamax. I think so far in, in, in the stream, it's, it was the most liked Pokemon yes. for people to Dynamax. It can fire off some incredibly like strong attacks and you know really uh, get a lot of things going. So Incineroar going for the fake out in, in Whimsicott, making sure that it can't go for things like um, Tailwind while this Dragapult goes for Max Phantasm, wow. is super effective, but it's not enough <laughs> to pick up the KO because of that focus says there on that Jellicent. It will be lowering the defenses of both the Incineroar and the Jellicent, making sure that maybe another um, attack is going to be doing a lot more damage. So because of the focus says lift on Jellicent, it is now able to get off that uh, trick room. Wow, I mean, I don't think we usually see Jellison actually having Focus Sash. So, very, very interesting uh, choice of item from Neil's side, too. Um, knowing that he can survive and guarantee the trick room off is actually super solid. And Fake Out doesn't obviously work on ghost types. So, at some, uh, the opponent would have to double in uh, to that Pokemon to actually take it out. So, Faking out the second Pokemon, in this case, Alexandra's Whimsicott. Solid, solid play. He wanted Trick Room up, he got Trick Room up. Yeah, you know, it's definitely, you know, that, that fake out um, option there on Nils Domlob. Make sure that, you know, the Whimsicott can't really do what it would like to yes. do. Go for maybe something like a Moonblast, or also something we've seen a lot of running like fake tears. Yeah. But we are going to see that Lapras now switching in, and Whimsicott leaving the field here, and Togek is going to be replacing it. Maybe now. Is head does have the option to go for something like follow me, just redirecting any attacks coming out, and we actually see absorb wow. here coming out. Was that from actually absorb? That wow. leprous, and it's going to proc the weakness policy here <laughs> on that leprous. While it's going to be raising its attack and special attack by two stages, definitely something we don't really see often. That absorb. No, I, I don't. I don't think I've ever seen absorb <laughs> coming out from Jellison. I have usually. Uh, Jellicents do try to run for Giga Drain, but I think he, uh, Neil's kind of thinking team building wise, he wants as little as a damage mitigation as possible uh, whilst trying to get that technique off, being able to proc the Lapras's weakness policy. Um, we do uh, actually see the Windscot swap out into the Togekiss as well, maybe try to get some redirection going whilst the Dragapult did. Max Guard, because it has revealed Life Orb. Um, so interesting interesting kind of position unfortunately at the current moment for alexandra Niels is kind of looking a bit stronger um because he might be dynamaxing that lapras but we actually see a switch out from jellison into incineral yeah alexandra does have the option to go for something like follow me making sure that the resonance is, isn't going to be going into that dragapult so we're going to see if that's the option what she decided to go for but instead we're first going to see that Probably Lepra's going to be going for its Gigantamax form. Yep. So it actually does come out. Uh, so Lapras going ahead, uh, Gigantamaxing, saying, well, I'm at plus two special attack. I've got a Gigantamax going on with my Lapras. I'm going to get my Aurora Veil going. What can you do in this position, Alexandra? Yeah, so Togekiss is going to be going for that follow me, protecting that Dragapult for any attacks here coming out. And we are going to see that G Max Resonance, which is Lepras is just incredibly good at doing Ooh. just enough to pick up the KO on that Togekiss. Definitely not Ooh. bulky enough. Is going to be getting that crit, but at plus two stages of special attack, I'm not really sure if it actually matters. It will now set up that Aurora Fields now. Nils Dunlop's team will be less um, 
attacked by the... Or oh, less resistance, so it'll be yeah. able to take the damage uh, much more better. And we actually see Max Lightning coming out from Dragapult's side. So it's setting up the electric terrain whilst trying to get some damage, as much of damage as it can, because with the boost from Life Orb from the Dragapult, it's not even barely going to be bringing it down mm. to half, though, is it? No, definitely with this boost, it's going to be quite rough. Also, Dragapult going for the Max Lightning probably does indicate that it runs Thunderbolt, and yes. so is the more special variant. Conkeldor is going to be coming onto the side of Alexandra here. Yeah, so, I mean, it's also quite... Uh, we have to remember that we didn't see clear body. Uh, we saw uh, actually negated, so it could potentially be an infiltrator. So that damage that we've seen would have potentially gone through Aurora Veil. So it would have actually been less if Aurora, Aurora Veil was actually uh, functional against uh, Dreadpool not being infiltrator. Um, but Kinkelda being able to try to come in, try to handle itself a bit better on Alexandra's side for Trick Room. Um, it's really good against Incineroar, uh, against Incineroar, pardon me. And Lapras as well, but is it going to just try to get some damage out, drain punch back in, uh, recovery? I don't know, I think it probably will be, but it's looking good right now. Yeah, but this Dragapult is feeling quite vulnerable here. Yes. It doesn't have their Togekiss next to it to redirect any moves, so if Lapras does want to go for any Ice-type moves uh, into that Dragapult, that's definitely going to be doing a lot of damage. Dragapult opting to go for that Protect, Ooh. and a Max Geyser here coming out from the Lapras, doing a lot of damage here on that Conkeldor, while at the same time it is going to be setting up that rain. Conkeldor now gonna go for that Drain Punch, is a super effective move, it's going to be healing back some of its damage, but with the amount that we just saw that happened to the Conkeldor is not going to live another attack as Trochop goes into the Protect of Dragapult. Yeah, so I think Niels uh, correctly, uh, he predicted that he should try to do as much damage as possible into the Conkeldor with his Lapras. Um, and he obviously onto, uh, opted for the Throat Chop in case Dragapult decides not to Protect because Incineroar, of course, under Trick Room does have the speed advantage over Dragapult. Will, most likely, depending on how the Incineroar is trained, if it's offensively trained enough, take out that Dragapult too. So really safe kind of plays coming from Neil's side. Can Delta being able to do some work for Alexandra um, right before Trick Room is about to expire, uh, because this is actually the last turn of Trick Room, being able to actually get some HP and solid damage off onto the Lapras. Yeah, Dragapult really feeling very threatened by this Lapras. Doesn't have really the opportunity to go for that protect again. Whimsicott coming in as Lapras fires off a another Max Geyser. This time it is also boosted by this range, so definitely enough to pick up the knockout here on that Kim Calder. So Alexandria now uh, left with only the Whimsicott and the Dragon Vault as Trochop does a little bit of damage onto that Whimsicott. But one thing he knows has to kind of worry about is now the fact that there's no longer Trick Room and he doesn't have any mons on the field that can set it for him. Well, exactly, and Alexandra, on the other hand, has been able to preserve both Dragapult and Whimsicott, which definitely love being outside of Trick Room, because um, it, Dragapult could go for multiple different things, whilst the Whimsicott can actually aid it and help it out in whichever way it can, or even just get some residual uh, Moonblast, potentially, damage off as well. Yeah, also, since we're kind of assuming that Dragapult is special, if it runs yes. something like Fake Tears, which we've Ooh, seen quite a lot, yes. it could possibly be uh, able to pick up the KO, but here, Alexandria not going to be going for that, but instead realizing there's probably really not that much she can do anymore. Maybe just wants to preserve some information, mm. doesn't want to reveal kind of what kind of whimsical she, she is running. Maybe she now kind of knows some game plan here going into game two to kind of adjust for it because I think the biggest kind of downfall for her was that absorb going into a weakness yes. policy a leprosy which is definitely probably not something you no. expect no 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 you definitely do not expect that so that's a really really handy uh, tech coming out from Neil's side um, just like you said correctly I do think that um, Alexandra's kind of trying to preserve a bit more information right now because right now we're at the point we don't know what that Windscott can do. Um, uh, we didn't a have we actually seen a move come out from it? It did get faked out first turn. It was basically incapacitated, was having to be rotated in and out. And um, really, I mean, Alexandra being able to feel that at this point, Niels has all four of his Pokemon in the back. He has the Incineroar and G-Max Lapras, or uh, D-Dynamax uh, now, should I say, or D-Gigantamax. Um, uh, and being able to just be that 
torrential wall in front of Alexandra that will prevent her from picking up game one. Yeah, the only thing I'm a little bit worried about for Alexandra is seeing that the um, Incineroar and Jellison lead. Looking at, at uh, Alexandra's team, there's no really um, ghost types or yes. something that you know isn't really affected by that fake out, meaning that Nils can possibly just go for the same thing again, go for fake out lift any attack because of the focus sash and then just set up trick room again mm -hmm. and i think that's really really hard for alexandra to stop at with her own team yeah i think uh, i mean it's kind of tough for alexandra because she kind of maybe wants to try to bring dragapult because it could uh, be able to get uh, bypass the fake out maybe get enough chip damage uh, or at least some damage um onto the jettison but what can follow up something maybe dynamax maybe uh, dragapult leads and something else Dynamax. So we might potentially even see a Lapras coming out from Alexandra's side, or even Togekiss Contelda maybe, because maybe Contelda's risky. It probably won't be. It's probably going to be maybe in the back, trying to preserve itself away away from in Incineroar's Intimidate. Yeah, possibly she could go for something like a Dragapult Togekiss, mm. um, go for the Dynamax on a Togekiss, trying to you know do a lot of damage immediately to that uh, Jellison and just try to double it up instead, because yeah. I think if Nils can get up that trick room again it's going to be incredibly hard for alexandra to really stop that so i'm also interested if nils is kind of you know taking that into account maybe changing up a bit of his lead sure um making sure that you know he's immediately in the right position so we're going to actually see again this yeah. incineroid jellison that works incredibly well for Definitely. nils here oh. and again we're going to see that whimsicott uh dragapult lead coming out from Alexandria. So are we maybe just going to see a, re a repetition of turn one that we saw in game one? Because it's definitely going to be a tough position here. Like Incineroar is kind of, you know, quite freely able to just uh, fake out that, that Whimsicott. Whimsicott yeah. And it's not really a Pokemon that you tend to generally Dynamax for because it's yeah. a very supportive Pokemon, meaning that you, you usually only run one attacking move, meaning that you only really have one option to then do some actual damage instead of just, you know, some support moves alter into max cards. Yeah, that's very, very true. Unless we actually see Alexandra make that outrageous <laughs> play of Dynamax in the Whimsicott, <laughs> just to try to guarantee, because that is one play that is very unexpected, but it's actually, because it's so unexpected, it might actually happen. Um, so actually we see, oh, no, we see the Whimsicott not being as brave as we wanted it to be, um, and actually protect. Fake out does go into the Wimscott slot, so Wimscott being able to preserve a potential focus sash if it does have Shadow Ball coming out from uh, Dragapult on Alexandra's side, being able to do a lot of damage onto Jellison, nearly ca uh, picking up or procking its focus sash, but um, we do uh, evidently see the Jellison set the trick room up. Yeah, so this time Alexandria just not opting to go for a Dynamax at all, making sure that, you know, she maybe knows, like, if I can just get in Dragapult later on with a Dynamax, that, you know, just might be the better play, but she still has to now make it through four turns of Trick Room. Yeah, I mean, uh, there, there are multiple things maybe Alexandra can do now because she's she's put herself definitely in a better position compared to game one with these four Pokemon on the board. Um, does Dragapult maybe switch out um, into Contelda expecting a Throat Chop? Uh, coming out from Incineroar. What does Whimsicott do? Does it, Because now it's burnt, it's a one protect move. Um, maybe go for the double. I don't think that would be highly into <laughs> her advantage to do it, but you never know. She might try to find whatever way she can to stall it out, but we actually see Whimsicott switch out for Contelda. Yeah, so she's switching the Whimsicott out because it's just really not offering any offensive pressure here. Dragapult going for Protect this time as Jellison feels quite free Ooh. to go for a Water Spout with its full HP. It's going to be doing a tiny bit of damage here. Oh yeah, no, I mean definitely. Um, I, I think that might have been to try to uh, break Whimsicott's Focus Sash, but we do actually see a Flare Blitz coming out from Incineroar into the Contelda slot, hoping to try to get rid of that Whimsicott because of the double of Water Spout and Flare Blitz into hopefully getting rid of the Whimsicott. Yeah, so here we, we're still going to see quite a different gameplay on here. Yeah. So Nils doesn't really have his uh, Lapras in, so I think it's if um, Alexandria just tries to try to not attack either one of these Pokemon, mm -hmm. it means that she can really stall out the Trick Room turns, while Jellison is going to be going for that Strength Sap, is going to be lowering the attack coming out 
from Dragapult, from, oh, sorry, from Conkelder. Yes. Well, it's going to be dealing back some damage. So Green Punch here coming out from Conkelder, doing a lot of damage here to this Incineroar, while also healing itself up to quite a high percentage. And here the Throw Chop coming out. Ooh. Ooh. Even the super effective move, not enough to pick up the KO on this Dragapult here, which is now free to go for another Shadow Ball, but is not enough to pick up the knockout there. Well, wow. it uh, gets KO'd because of its own life or damage. Yeah, so the recoil coming in there to unfortunately, um, or fortunately, uh, position Alexandra into bringing a new Pokemon in, which actually is Togekiss. Um, <laughs> it's quite funny seeing the Jellicent recovering so much HP back, literally going back up to full, only to just be back down to only 4 HP off of where it previously was. So, I, I think at this current moment, Kinkelda is looking strong. Yes, it's at minus 1 attack, but it is still being able to threaten both the Incineroar and the Jellicent. Um, maybe the Jellicent, maybe it does have some sort of coverage move, like a Thunder Punch, which definitely would pick up uh, the KO on the Jellicent from this range. But thankfully for Alexandra, she does have that redirection possibility coming out from the target kiss too. Yeah, I would really like to see Ale Alexandra really target down this Jellison, just making sure that Nils can't really later on set up any trick room. So Incineroar here leaving the field, the Lapras is going to be switching, is, is going to be taking that uh, attack here coming out from Conkelda and it is going to be raising its weakness policy like we also yes. saw in game one, so <laughs> another strength step here coming out from Jellison again, going to be lowering that attack stat of Conkelder, which is now going to be at a minus two, while Togekiss goes for a Dazzling Gleam here, doing a little bit of damage, ooh. but ooh, Jellison actually revealing that <laughs> it's Cursed Body, so Togekiss doesn't have the opportunity to go for Dazzling Gleam again no, right now. No, not for another couple of terms, it doesn't. Um, I think right there, that must have been a really good read from Neil's side, because he was able to anticipate the fighting type move coming into Incineroar there. He made a gamble, he went for it. He was able to get Lapras's weakness policy proc without having to go for the self procking absorb move, whilst being able to uh, regenerate some of Jellicent's HP back whilst at the cost of Kintelda's uh, another negative one attack stat for Kintelda's side. Yeah, Le Lapras is under half HP, so I mean, sure. if it now, you know, goes for a you know, it's Gigantamax form. Yep. It's still going to be, ha kind of have to worry about a double up here coming out from Alexandra's side. So Jellison here switching out instead. Incineroar is going to be switching in, is going to be firing off another Intimidate. Now onto this Conkeller being that is now at minus three and is yep. definitely really not going to be doing that much damage here. Ooh. Alexandra really knowing that, you know, at minus two and now even minus three, the Conke her Conkeller is not going to be doing the damage that she wants. She's going to be switching in that Whimsicott. So Niels is going to be uh, going for that Dynamax here, but I believe we have a Premier Ball again. Probably that Lepras yes. is going to be going for its Gigantamax form. Yeah, exactly. So Niels being able to have that possibility in the back. Um, now he's in a position where he does have Trick Room up. He wants to be able to start getting this G-Max Lapras going, get the Aurora Veil set up as well, and maybe get the uh, conserve the Jellicent a bit as well in the back. And we actually see a Dynamax coming out from Alexandra's side as well onto the Togekiss. So trying to go maybe for sheer damage, maybe he just wants to try to extend its longevity in anticipation of this G-Max Resonance at plus two from Lapras. Will it survive though? I'm not sure. I mean, they it, are it now probably will. going yeah. to find out it is going to be going into that Togekiss Ooh. at plus two. It's still going to be able to hang on because of its Dynamax form and that double HP, but we are going to see that Aurora Hill uh, coming out from Lapras, making its team a little bit more bulky as now Incineroar is going to be taking a max airstream, which is not going to be able to live Oh, definitely no chance for that Incineroar there, uh, only because of the range of HP it was currently at. Um, uh, the speed does uh, increase on both the Wimscott and the Togekiss from Alexandra's side, as Trick Room does actually end. Yeah, but now Incineroar did just faint, meaning that Nils is um, free to kind of switch back in his Jellicent yeah. and maybe try to get up a another Trick Room. 
definitely something that Henry really, really has to worry about because she just tried to survive through those turns of, of trick room and yep. she has to do it again. It, she might not really have the firepower to really deal with that. That's very true because, I mean, we still haven't seen what this Whimsicott mm -hmm. does. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting to see the actual moves that's coming from it, other than Protect we've seen. Um, but Jellison does actually come out from Neil's side. Um, will Alexandra be able to somehow um, stop this Jellison from actually setting up yet again a trick room. Yeah, I think we're really kind of going to have some reads here because I'm yep. not sure if we really saw something like Protect coming out from Jellison, but you know, in case it has it, Alexandra might just really want to double up mm -hmm. into the Jellison, making sure there's not going to be any trick room, but yep. if this Jellison does run something like Protect, Lepros can just, you know, take the KO yes. on, on, for instance, the Togekiss, and then it can still set it up again next turn. Very true. Uh, we, ki I mean, at this point, we have Whimsicott Togekiss. I've used Whimsicott Togekiss, Fake Tears, mm -hmm. Crit Kiss, mm -hmm. because it just absolutely destroys certain types of Jellisons. We might actually be seeing that kind of strategy coming up from Alexandra, but the Protect would be a critical. And actually, Whimsicott does go for the, ta the Fake Tears. Yeah, into that Jellison, probably Togekiss is going to be following up with a, a Max Starfall into the Jellison, just making sure that Nils really can't get up another trick room. Yeah, I mean, it, it's like we predicted it. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think that was a really solid play from Alexandra. Um, the one play that would have gone wrong for her is what you correctly pointed out before, if Jellison does actually carry that Protect. But we do see G-Max Resonance coming out from the lap Lapras, being able to finally get rid of that Togekiss, which has been honestly kind of pivotal um, in a way to Alexandra's side. It was able to pick up the Jellison right now, but I think we're looking at a 1-2 deficit f uh, for Alexandra right now. Yeah, she still has Conkeldra in the back, and oh, Nils doesn't have its last Pokemon revealed yet, so we're yes. going to find it. It is your favorite Ooh, bird Pokemon yeah. that goes <laughs> to be joining the field. Oh. That's Sir Farfetch'd. I have been wanting <laughs> Nils to bring it. It's like he heard me. <laughs> and he's like, no, trust that. I'm going to do you the favor. And I'm grateful. <laughs> so do you think uh, Surfetch now is in a good position here? I mean, it just, I think it can really put in work. It obviously depends on its item choice as well. It could be running the leak, which gives it, uh, gives it sorry, plus two uh, critical stage increase. And if you accompany that with Leaf Blade or Night Slash, that is guaranteed 100% all the time critical hits um, that Neos could get. But it, it's uh, very interesting. Obviously, we've got uh, G-Max Lapras still being a threat. Um, being at just below half, but honestly, it all depends on what Wimscott can do. But Wimscott doesn't have a partner right now which takes advantage of fake tears. No, so Wimscott goes for a Moon Blast instead into that Surf Farfetch, doing quite a lot of damage there. So Surf Farfetch firing back with a close combat, not enough to pick up the knockout on a dead Conkelder and it's also going to be lowering its own defense and special offense so Conkelder can fire back with a drain punch here is enough to pick up the knockout there on that Sir Farfetch. I think Conkelder living there really really important it really has to worry about that Conkelder because you know Whimsicott isn't the most you know attacking kind of mom but yeah. he is gonna go for that making sure that it now is going to be brought down to its focus sash. Oh wow I mean uh, honestly I'm not 100% sure who's got this. I think it's a bit of a, a stalemate because right now we do have the Lapras D Gigantamaxing from Neil's side. Um, uh, we do have uh, uh, Alexandra uh, being able to um, have two Pokemon against Neil's only single Lapras. Lapras is below uh, uh, around half HP. Whimsicott and Conkelda are at pivotal stage two. But they are going to be the faster ones in the field. So uh, yes, Whimsicott can exactly. go for a Moonblast, Conkelda can go for a Drain Punch, which yes. is most likely going to be enough to pick up the KO on this Lapras. Definitely Should because be. it's not in its Gigantamax form anymore. Unless maybe the Lapras has Ice Shard because it is at plus two weakness policy. Maybe somehow <laughs> it did pull out a mirror on the Tintelda? I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, we're definitely going to kind of find out here. Both players kind of taking their ah. time, but we are going to see that Whimsicott go for that Moonblast into the Lapras. It's also going to be lowering its special attack as Conkelder does follow it up with a Drain Punch, enough to pick up the KO on that Lapras here. So we're going into game three here. Yes, that's game three. It's 
<laughs> I mean, we kind of expected it, right, in a way, because these are two very, very good players. They're both really good at adapting, um, uh, and honestly, the consistency of their skills and their prep into going into these big kind of tournaments, these regional... She didn't take the knockout on an Incineroar. They also didn't have the opportunity to just freely bring in that, that Leper. So instead, she kind of wasted about, you know, three turns yes. of that Trick Room, while Nils really didn't have that opportunity to, to bring in that Leper. So now going into game three, maybe uh, Nils is going to want to go for the same thing, but maybe switch in that Lapras a little bit more. But then we're just yeah. going to be creating those mind games, especially if you kind of uh, have the same kind of leads multiple games in a row. It's very unlikely for every yes. turn to go exactly the same way. Oh, definitely. You really going to have to make sure that you know you kind of cover for all the possibilities or you just really have to go for a read if you yeah. know that's kind of the kind of player that you are because everyone of course also has a different play style here oh definitely but something i would still really like alexandra to bring is that toge kiss and drag up hold going for that dynamax uh there with the toge kiss making sure that it can actually this time take out that gelatin yes i completely agree I, I do think that um alexandra is fearing that lapras gmax resonance being able to pick up that on Dragapult, or uh, I mean, even pro pro probably being able to get rid of Dragapult because it would put her in a bit of a disadvantage. But Tired Kiss being Dynamax is always a threat that you always have to take into account and consider. Um, it was really good how she brought it back, though. I I'm really impressed with how she did. But even if she loses Dragapult in turn one, she could be uh, free to, for instance, bring Whimsicott in, and yes. then together with a Togekiss, that's a really good combination. Very, very true. Double Fairy is always the best. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, in this solid. format, is something we definitely see a lot, but I think it can definitely work for her. But I think we're really now going to get, you know, into those high-level mind games. Like, yeah. what exactly, you know, can my opponent currently do? And, you know, kind of also take into account, like, what happened into, you know, game one and game two. Alexandra now knows, you know, the Jellison does run Absorb, can proc the weakness policy on yep. Lepros, and then it's for her incredibly hard to really make it out of trick room if that Lapras gets in that situation. Exactly. I think it's literally what you just stated. Niels has to be able to find that position for the G-Max Lapras to safely get in, have enough HP or even none affected onto it so it can potentially sweep for him, get uh, the rain up through Max Geysers as well as G-Max Resonance and be able to seal it so he could potentially seal getting into top cut after this final round. Yeah, we're going to see a switch up here from Nils. He's actually bringing his own Togekiss together with the Jellicent. And Alexandra also switching up, not bringing the Dragapult, but instead leading with her own Lapras. <laughs> I mean, Lapras makes it make i think this is what we were saying there there are quite a few different leads and it's all the mind games that are put in to the final game final round what's mm -hmm. going to happen who's going to come out on top and lapras starting to reveal itself from alexandra's side saying listen i can use my lapras too i can try to get my aurora mm -hmm. veil up and try to deal with your pokemon in return yeah, also kind of new uh, switching it up, maybe be bringing that toe is making sure that it can redirect any moves, possibly targeting that Jellison, because for him probably the setting up that trick room is incredibly important, but now yeah. Alexandra also switched it up. It has, she has his own Lapras, meaning that it's not going to be as easy for Nils to really roll with its own Lapras, and we are going to immediately see that possibly looking at the dive ball yes. going to be <laughs> that Lapras, which is going to go for its Gigantamax form. So kind of switching some roles here. So we, we see the Lapras on Ale a a Alexandra's side now going to maybe go for a uh, G-Max resonance into the Togekiss yes. on Nils' side. As we do Ooh. see Whimsicott going for that fake tears into the swap of Togekiss. It doesn't need any weakness policy. It can just go for fake tears while the air slash is going to coming out to that Whimsicott with a critical hit, but of course because of that focus sash, it's luckily still going to be hanging on as Lapras does go for its G-Max resonance onto the Togekiss. Is enough here to pick up the KO on Nils's Togekiss. Yeah. So kind of an a little bit of role reversal yeah, here. Definitely. definitely Alexandra here using that Lapras. I think looking at her reaction there, she's really happy yeah. to have already been dealing with some like a really important threat like Togekiss. The other side does get out the trick room, so now Nils does have the opportunity to bring in his own Lapras if he decided to go for that, but also maybe bring in something like the, the Surfetched. Yeah, I mean, I think that Alexandra did uh, realize that 
Listen, I've been having a bit of issues because Niels has been having uh, quite a tanky a team with regards to being able to set up the Aurora Veil. Um, actually, me being able to wear his team out in response, in retaliation with my own GMAX Lapras might actually work and prove to be pivotal because right now we're looking at Aurora Veil already being set up. 4-3 uh, in favor of Alexandra. Women's Cut, of course, is down to Focus Sash, but it's got a lot of potential. Now, the one, the one thing about Whimsicott is that it does carry Prankster, so yes. it doesn't really care about Trick Room going up. It's still going to be able to fire up a fake tears in case that it wants. So Nils actually did bring again that Lepris, and it's now going to be joining the field on his side. Yeah, so I mean, uh, just like you mentioned, uh, Whimsicott doesn't care about Trick Room because it does have that plus one priority. Lapras does come uh, through on Nils' side. Is he going to try to self-proc uh, his we own weakness policy with the Absorb technique? Because right now, Alexandra doesn't have redirection on her side, so she can't redirect that strategy. Um, at the current minute, I feel that Niels is going to be trying to want to get his own G-Max resonance up, unless he does have potentially an Electro-type move. And I could even say the same for Alexandra's side too. Yeah, so definitely kind of a switch around here. The two facing uh, Lapras facing each other, you know, they can start doing a little bit of damage, but I think for Nils it's quite important to also take care of that Wim's Cup, making sure that it can't go for another fake tears and just kind of get off free a lot of damage. So Lapras here, not gonna go for his Gigantamax Max form, we do see that fake tears coming out from that Whimsicott, as Jellison does go for that Water Spout, just making sure that the Whimsicott is going to be dealt with this turn. So no more fake tears coming out, as Lepros actually revealed that it does carry that uh, Max Lightning, does do a, a lot of damage there on that Jellison, and is going to be setting up the terrain. So if he wants to go, for, uh, she wants to go for another one, mm -hmm. it's going to be doing even more damage. Oh yeah, it, it, it most unless it all depends on speed ties as well, because we've got two. Uh, Lapras is right now. We don't know the speed training in between them. If Niels is somehow able to get his G Max resonance up earlier, maybe at some point um, his Jellison might survive because it might be able to get a strength sap off, especially with the Contelta coming in from Alexandra's side at the current moment. Yeah, we are, you know, still three turns of Trick Room left and kind of, you know, we now have on both sides quite slow Pokemon, but we're really going to have to see exactly how the speech the speed uh, here matches up yes. and it's probably going to really determine how these turns play out. Who trained in this case their Pokemon to be the slowest. Yes, exactly. Uh, I mean you would think maybe Niels, because he does have that trick room option on his head and sorry, unless somehow the Wimscot is carrying that very tricky mm -hmm. <laughs> trick room <laughs> as well uh, because it can actually learn it believe it or not. Yes, yeah, so you can learn both Tailwind and Trick Room, but we s usually see it run Tailwind, but it can be quite detrimental if yes. it does learn something like Trick Room, because it's something that you fight that you don't expect, don't e expect as much. But now Nils' Lepros also is going to be going for its Gigantamax form. We are Ooh. going to see that Absorb coming out from Jellicent is going to be proccing that weakness policy on th on the Lapras there on Nils' side is now going to be at plus two attack and plus two special attack stages there. So it's going to be doing a lot of damage just like we saw that it did in game one. So here it's going to go for the G-Max move into the Conkel. There is still going to decently comfortable take this, but it's now also the Aurora Veil is going to be up on Nils' side. Yeah, so I mean, that Aurora Veil really coming into play from Alexandra's side. We do see a drain punch from the Conkelda trying to chip away some damage and actually get a good amount of HP back onto Niels's um, Lapras. We actually see um, uh, Alexandra's uh, Lapras go for G-Max Lightning into the opposing Lapras as well, being able to chip away some damage, good damage-ish, but not 100% solid because of the Aurora Veil that Niels has revealed is actually slower at the current moment than Alexandra's uh, Lapras. Yeah, also quite important to mention is, you know, Niels still has some turn of his uh, Giganta Max yes. left, even though Alexandra is now down to, you know, no, just a le regular form, making the Lepros also just a little bit less bulky. So, might, you know, something like, you know, a very strong double up might still be able to pick it up. I'm also quite interested what Neil still has in the back. If he maybe has mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, surfetched, it could really start, uh, you know, go for something like Leaf Blade, you know, those super effective moves, just making sure that 
uh, he deals with the lepers on Alexandra's side. Yes, so I, I'm going to be interested to see if Niels is potentially going to try to set up rain because we have seen that neither, I think, neither, definitely Alexandra's uh, lepers doesn't have water absorb, which indicates it potentially has shell armor. We actually see protect coming out from Alexandra's um, uh, lapras. We see the strength sap coming out from Jellison into uh, Contelda's uh, into Contelda, sorry, being able to hate, uh, recover all of its HP up and uh, at minus one uh, uh, attack. Yeah, so a Max Geyser now is going to be going into that Conkelder, doing quite a lot of damage, but more importantly, is also going to be setting up that rain again. So another um, attack here from that Lapras could start doing a lot of damage again, but also, you know, Alexandra's Lapras could as well go for quite a strong. Uh, water attack because the Lapras here on Nils' side, as you can see, it only has 90 HP left. So, pretty much any strong attack coming out from Conkelder or from Lapras on, on Alexandra's side should be enough to pick up the knockout. But we did see that Lapras on Nils' side was faster, meaning yes. that it can, can go for a, another Gigantum in next movies. We did see that t the Conkelder took quite a, a lot of damage from that Max Geyser when it wasn't in. Uh, rain. Yes, so I mean it's all about does Contelda dare to go for the Mac Punch right now into the G Max Lapras, but actually we see the Contelda swap out for the Dragapult, um, which is a very interesting move. Um, we do see the Jellicent go for the Water Spout, being able to get quite a hefty amount of damage, taking the Dragapult down to half HP and uh, being able to hit, oh, through a <laughs> critical hit of course, because we do have to remember Aurovel is still up on Alexandra's side and we do see a Max Geyser come out from Niels, this is uh, Lapras being able to completely finish off that Dragapult as a result. Yeah, so the switch in here of the Dragapult and Alexandra losing is probably really not what she hoped here, but Lapras is still going to go for that freeze that is still going to be yeah. super effective. Ooh, Ooh and oh it's <laughs> going to freeze oh well. the Jealous. It can definitely make quite a difference here. Jealous yeah. not really being able to move anymore as now this Conkelder comes back in. So no more like strength sap coming out from Jellison until it actually untosses. So I think that's definitely something that Nils really, really have to hope for. But, you know, being frozen is always really scary because you just don't know when you're going to wake up as compared to, for instance, you know, with sleep, sleep turns. you know, you yes. know, after three turns, you're going to wake up, but you know, freezes can kind of last forever. So that's always really something worrisome, but definitely kind of for Alexandra might be a way to really um, come back into this game. Now. Yeah, I mean, uh, I do believe, and I speak for all VGC players, uh, freeze <laughs> does tend to be the bane of all of our existences <laughs> um, uh, because it's so, you just don't know what you're going to get out of it. Are you going to try to thaw? How long will it take? We actually see Lapras go ahead and go for the Thunderbolt. Yeah, so it is now numbers. enough to pick up at least the KO on Nils' Lapras here. Ooh. As Conkelder reveals that it also has that Thunderbolt punch doing a lot of damage. But here, that Cursed Body coming into play. Jalison is going to be frozen again. But that Conkelder is kind of in a tough uh, position still now. Yeah, I mean, definitely tough right now um, for the uh, unfortunate Jellison. Uh, not being able to get a move off whilst Alexandra is outside of Trick Room. Uh, does have that Contelda, which has revealed Thunder Punch, whilst I do believe it was previously built, uh, uh, sorry, uh, boosted by the Electric Terrain. What can, I mean, it's looking really solid. It can try to, uh, from Contelda's side, maybe get some more Drain Punches off, try to recover even more HP, because we do see the Surf Fetch coming out from Neil's side too. So a Lepros, she's opting to go for a very strong Hydro Pump, is going to be connecting onto that Surf Farfetch, bringing it down to almost over uh, under half HP as the close combat from Surf Farfetch is enough to pick up the knockout on the Conkelder here on Alexandra's side, meaning that she's now just left with that Lepros, oh. but she is going to be facing down um, that Sir Farfetch, we saw that the Lepers actually outsped it, so if yes. she's able to take it out, and she kind of has to hope that Jalison yeah. doesn't untarn, yeah. and then she might actually be in it, so I think the freeze was actually quite important, just because of the fact that there's no more strength sub coming exactly. out from that Jalison, which would have really lowered the attack, the Prince of the yes. Thunder Punch coming out from Con Conkelder, and now it's you know still at quite a low HP, so Sir Farfetch realizing it doesn't really want to take that, it no. just wants to try and see if the um, Jellison is going to be on towing. So we are going to see the freeze Ooh. dry going into Third the protect turn. on wow. so far fetch, but 
sadly here for Nils, it's not going to be on top. It's just going to be staying frozen. Wow. I mean, that poor, poor <laughs> Jellison. Unfortunately, just can't do anything about it. All he can do is click buttons and hope. I mean, oh, wow. So actually, right now, we do see the Surfetch trying to kind of preserve in hope Jellison does un uh, Thor, but Puddin does try to go for the double protect. Does not get it, unfortunately, for Nils' side. We do see a freeze dry coming out from Alexandra's Lapras. Is going to be able to pick it up? It does. Wow, that is a huge turn. Will Jellison actually be able to un unthaw? It does not, unfortunately, for the fourth turn in a row. Yeah, so Lepra is now quite free to go for another freeze dry there yeah. into the Jellison. And let me a little bit here unlucky here for Nils Domino, realizing that there isn't really anything he can do, meaning that Alexandra is actually taking the win here. Alexandra proving <laughs> that freeze dry can also freeze. <laughs> <laughs> Something that not a lot of people actually notice because you only think that freeze dry is really good because it can hit super effective damage onto water types, but it can actually freeze and showing freeze can always be a win con. Yeah, I mean it's kind of the same thing with with rock slide. You know, it's yes. kind of always when you know when there's a rock slide, there's mm -hmm. a way. And yeah. I guess now that really was the same way. But you know, getting that freeze was incredibly important, and I it think was. it was also on the exact. A perfect moment for it yes. to happen. Oh, it definitely was because I think if Surfetch was trained to be faster than the Lapras, I think Niels would have a much stronger chance to be able to pick that up. Obviously, it still was huge. It was amazingly huge. The freeze, the four-turn freeze on the Jellicent, because um, at that point Surfetch was at minus one uh, special defense as well because of close combat. So it could have tried to go maybe for a Leaf Blade crit if it was quicker, but unfortunately. It was not. It just couldn't be able to do the justice that I really wanted <laughs> it to, but unfortunately it didn't. No, definitely. And we are going to still have a winner's interview. I already want to thank everyone here for joining. Costa is going to be doing the interview, and I hope to at least see everybody again tomorrow. So we're going to be right back with the interview. Thank you. nothing else I can do. Oh, hello everybody. We are back with the winner of our final round, last round of Pokemon 2020 Malmo Regional Event. Alexandra, our winner. Wow, what a win. How do you feel? Was it as intense as it looked? Uh, it was exactly as intense as, <laughs> as it looked. There were like so many things on the Niels team that took me by surprise, like the Absorb on the on the yeah. jelly sand was uh, I I actually laughed <laughs> <laughs> when I saw this. So I was like, oh my god, I Th that's so brilliant, yeah. actually. I, th I think we were laughing. I mean, I was definitely laughing. I was like, wow, it's yeah. not even Giga Drain. <laughs> it's absorbed. No, just just, just, absorb. <laughs> just, just to pro proc the witness policy. I mean, uh, I, I respect that, really. It's true, because it's just a dedicated move slot just yeah, for that just, reason. Just for that reason. Exactly. Just for that one reason. Like, like no, 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 no other reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we saw that you did um, end up bringing uh, your own G Max Lapras, because we saw Niels was really opting for his trick room, kind of like. He was definitely trying to get his trick room up because the Jellison did reveal that it had Focus Sash, yeah. which is something you don't usually expect to see, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was actually... Mm, uh, the reason I, I didn't protect Whimsy Court yeah. uh, in, in the first game was because I, I, I just like was... It, it was something I actually considered because mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I talked to with some people that so, some some pe some other people were are running Sash Jellison. I was like, okay, maybe, uh -huh. maybe he'll go for something like part, Parting Shot into... Uh, into my uh, maybe dr no m maybe just whimsy card yes. partition in, in into whimsy card and and then uh, be able trickle. to bring yes just, just trick because he doesn't he doesn't care to if if I like if I fake tears mm -hmm. uh, he would only care if I if I go for for uh, for a double uh, for, for for Max Phantasm and 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 and, and, yeah. and another move yeah and yeah, another yeah attack. Of for the double in yeah yeah, yeah 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 and. So I, I was correct, but uh, Nils, uh, of course, uh, used to fake out on, on my Wimsy Yeah. So mm, it was very, very, very difficult to go from there. I just, I just decided to <laughs> to, to forfeit the match. No, I mean that's and completely fair. You were able to preserve information as well, to yeah, be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think we saw a move from Wimsy by that point. No, as well. no, 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 no. I, 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 uh, I, I, I was. Uh, I decided not to not to re reveal the the protect, and I, th yeah. I think it, it actually helped me a lot in the in the second game. Yes. Because uh, it it kept uh, it kept uh, Incineroar mm -hmm. uh, from from doing pretty much anything. Yes. Uh, 
Uh, it kind of made it useless whilst wasting Niels' own trick room yeah, turns yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That didn't was it? that was exactly that was exa exactly my goal to to stall out the trick room mm -hmm. and s like try not to st uh, too many of my to my of my resources. Yes, and then we actually we did see that G Max Lapras come out in game yeah. three. Um, what was your whole thought process around it? Like at that point, do you think it was definitely the right call? Yeah, definitely. Because uh, after game two, I noticed that uh, Nils really, really, really goes for that uh, trick room play, mm -hmm. and uh, I thought maybe, maybe I thought that m I thought that maybe if I if I could set up my my uh, G Max regionals faster than him, mm -hmm. I would have uh, an advantage because uh, his team is. Uh, Pretty actu actually pretty pretty similar in a way that he that it's uh, it's bulky but can mm -hmm. can dish out can dish out decent damage. Yes. But if that damage is uh, re reduced by by by, by the Gmax regional effect, then mm -hmm. uh, I could I, I could I could I could um, it, it would be easier for me to start out the trick from turns, which is yeah. exactly what ha happened actually. Yeah, I know it actually did. Uh, so you were just trying to like meet Niels at that level of saying, "Listen, yeah. you get your Aurora Veil up, <laughs> yes. I'll get mine up as yeah. well. I don't mind. Yeah. I'll give it a shot." Uh, all right, <laughs> you go for that Lapras spray. Let let me show you yeah. <laughs> how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> and we did. Wow, we did see that. I'm gonna talk to you about it because yeah. you know it's coming. That <laughs> freeze. Oh yeah. That was that um, was something else. That was something else. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, we take those. Uh, as as I say, we take those. Yes. That phrase, that <laughs> phrase could not be more true. Yeah. You got to at some point. It is very unfortunate, but at the same point, it is part of the game that we play, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I had I had to abuse that. Uh, that, that, that luck. Yeah, I mean, you had to like keep your fingers crossed. You're like, yeah, no strength yeah. up, no weight up, no one please, please don't. Please, please <laughs> don't, please don't, please, please don't uh, <laughs> protect, double protect with with, with Farfetch. Please yeah. no, please, uh, please no. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean that uh, was that was some really something to watch. Yeah, it was it was actually ner nerve wracking. The last the last like two or three turns were yeah. completely nerve wracking. Oh, definitely, because like your Lapras actually was quicker than the surface. Yeah, wasn't yeah, it? yeah. Because yeah, I was surprised. I was thought I was thinking. Yeah, it's wow. There's no speed in that surface, yes, is there? Yes. Yes. Uh, Actually, my my my, lap that my Lapras is actually also pretty fast. Mm. I ah, I don't okay. ride much much bark on on a Lapras. Fair enough. And uh, it yeah, it, it definitely came in clutch. Yeah. In, the, in that game because I, I could hydro pump uh, the uh, self fetched when, yes. when 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 rain when, when rain was still up. Yeah, yeah. So you could try and to get uh, that damage out. Yeah, but out I, I didn't I didn't mach punch with with Conqueror because it it wouldn't even kill from that range mm -hmm. and i wasn't sure which which pokemon uh Nils would target would he target uh, yep. or would he tar target uh, the rappers Your, yes yeah. yeah i mean that's completely fair it, yeah. it makes just a lot just of play very safe play yeah it, very safe it play but it was it was able to work it was able to yeah up, it, wasn't it it worked it worked I mean, wow. that's so solid. You did get the win. So that <laughs> does take you to uh, six, six and two, two, I believe. Yes. Yeah. So you still have a chance yeah, to I get that win tiny, and in. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit of chance to get to get to day two. It's all right. You got, even if, let's say, for example, you don't, you still get CP, right? Yeah, And of you do get that stream, that last round. Oh, that yeah. That is yours. Oh, yeah. That yeah, is yeah. all yours right now. And that, that was been, just such a good set. I've been loving my stream so far. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be saving it, keep it on the side, checking it out every now and then. Oh, that was so good, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thank you so much for the interview Thank as well. You. I really appreciate it. I really love hearing your insight as well on the match. Um, we are going to cut to a short break, only so we can try to get the top eight reveal. Um, we will be posting uh, just a layout to show who is actually in the top eight, who has made it. I hope for you that you have actually made it. We still yeah, don't know yet. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, we still don't know yet. Fingers crossed. And um, we'll cut back and we'll be... In just a couple of minutes, I think, very yeah. soon. We'll find out. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs>